everyone. Welcome to the last week of Fluff Cats Get Your Act Together with me, Jack Wynn. We've been on a nice journey with each other and it's been a, a wonderful experience for me and I'm sure it's been an experience for all of you guys at home. Uh, but now we're in the last week before we will end up going to term three, which will be um, come September time. So I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who's tuned in and who's liked, who's left comment, and who's generally been supportive of this of this channel and of this journey that we've all gone on together. It wasn't something we all anticipated, but ultimately, I think we've all learned something. I know, I know, I have. So I thought with today being our last lesson, I was just gonna do a, a roundup of what we've kind of covered in the last 10 weeks and in, in term two. So I thought on top of that as well, we've got a few, three more scales and that will cover us for grade two, rock school with all the scales. And then when we get back into September, we can just keep on going where we left off, pick it up from there. So as we do always, just before we get started, I'll just say, if you're under 18, please tell your parents to do in this session. Um, but please feel f uh, free to ask questions and make comments, but stay mm. safe online by just giving your first name. And I hope you enjoy today's lesson. Yeah, so we're going to get started and we're just going to do, make sure everybody's in tune. Um, so we'll just won't get too much into it. I know we've been covering harmonics and how to tune with our ears, but today, if you've got uh, an app and you tune up to that, fantastic. Um, so I'm just going to play an E chord. E major chord and hopefully everyone's in tune with that so I'll just match it to our said E chord so hopefully that should be okay everyone's okay and in tune just gonna check my microphone is working one two one two should be right yeah brilliant right so right guys I thought we'd get into um, a nice hammer on pull off warm up exercise today because uh, we're going to be learning a song today which is going to require us to do uh, a hammer on and a pull off so I thought it'd be a good little warm up exercise to get into this so if you just want to take your time we're going to do it brilliant uh, <laughs> thank you for that um, if you just want to take your time we're going to try with our first finger we're going to go to the first fret of the B string Okay, because this is the song we're going to do is going to be a hammer on here, and we're going to pluck that string and pull off. Okay, like that, like that, just pulling off. So just do it four times. So one, two, three, four. So when I'm playing that note, I'm pressing down. So I'm going to move my laptop screen down a bit, just so we can see. So I'm playing that and letting go. So I'm only plucking once with my right hands with the pick hand so like that so we're going to do it four times again just so we're, everyone's on board a bit so we're going to go one two three four and just get comfortable with it so you're hammering on pulling off okay and then once you've done that we're going to slide up and we're going to start stretching out our tendons and our fingers so we're going to do a slide up to the second fret of the b string as well and we're just going to go So we're going to go one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. And then we're going to go with our ring finger and the third fret. So we're going up chromatically every fret. One, two, three, four. And then again, one, two, three, four. And don't worry if you're plucking some other strings like I've just did then. It's the fundamentals of this exercise are just to get these hammer-ons and pull-offs working with all four fingers. Okay, so we'll finish up with our pinky on the fourth fret of the B string. So we'll go one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Okay, brilliant. Moving on, um, we'll do a nice little quick chromatic ascending and descending exercise. So we'll start with this one. We'll start, um, we'll keep down here on the neck. We'll start on our F and we're just gonna go up the neck. I'm gonna just right quickly 
Um, I'm going to put this to a metronome because, um, as I've said before, it's always good to, to implement uh, your practice with a sense of pulse and, 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 and a beat. So I've got this metronome set, so you should be here. It's set to 80 BPMs per minute. So a nice sort of like relatively slow tempo. And we're going to take our first finger, put it on our F string. Two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. I'll tell you what, I'm going to slow that down a little bit because it might be a little bit faster for people. So I'm going to slow it down to 65. A bit slow that I know. I'm gonna slow it down to 70 guys. Yeah. yeah, so one, two, three, four, and 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 one, two, three, four. And once we get here, we're going to go down. Sounds like we're playing a bit of a Black Sabbath song there, doesn't it? Um, so, yeah, so we've done that, and we're just going to finish up with these um warm-up exercises and we'll do like a nice tonal stretching one so we're going to stretch out these tendons now so we've got all the fingers working we've got our hammer-ons and pull-offs working nicely hopefully we're going to finish up just to stretch out these tendons in our um, in our hand we're going to do it and we're going to keep in the same similar sort of position so we'll keep that metronome on so i'm going to start just a little example just before we get started it's going to go f with our first finger uh, our index finger and it's going to go G with my middle finger and so I'm going over the whole tone. We've done this before guys so you should be familiar with this and then we'll be on um, A with that one and then finish up there. Okay and we're going to do this up the neck as well. We won't go back down with this one though because it'll take too long. Okay so after four, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one. And we'll just finish up there on that high B. Okay, brilliant guys. Well done for that. If you manage that with ease, don't worry if you um, had a few done notes because it takes a little bit of practice when you're doing those warm-ups. Um, but applying applying it applying them to um a metronome as well because you you're doing two things at once there you're practicing your timing keeping in time to a, a rhythm and a pulse and you're also doing your practicing your warm-ups and you're also using all four of your fingers so you're hitting a lot of criteria and so as i've said a lot of times before it's really good to if you can implement do, practicing two things at once simultaneously it's it's just going to make your um, progression so much faster. So right, we're going to get into these uh, three new scales, which will complete our grade two rock school scales. So last week we did uh, the G major scale, E natural minor, and the C minor pentatonic. And this week we're going to be covering G minor pentatonic, C major pentatonic and G major pentatonic, so all pentatonic scales here, these are all in the, grade, in the grade two. So what I'll do is I'll give you an example of the first one and then we'll look at it on the tabs that I've wrote out and then we'll go through it together, okay? And we'll do that with all three. Okay, so with this one, with the G minor pentatonic, as all scales, you start with the root note. So if it's a G minor pentatonic, my root note is gonna be G, okay? So I'm gonna be on the third fret my index finger there on the note G, on the low E string, okay? And what you're going to need for this one is you're going to need your pinky free. This is why it's always important to warm up with your pinky as well. So we're going to go three, six with our pinky, and then three, five on the A string, and then three, five, 
on the D string, and then we're going to go down three, five, three, six, five. Okay, oh, three, sorry, like that. So if I just show you on here, it's always good to know this one. So I'm just going to go look at it on here. So let's keep that uncovered for now. So we're looking three on the third fret on the E string, and then six with our pinky jumping up to the A string, three, five, and then up to the D, three, five, three, back down to the A, five, three, six, three, okay? So we're gonna get this one now, and I will do it, we'll, we'll do each of these ones to the metronome, um, and then we'll move forward. So I'll get my metronome back up. So it's going two, three, four, and one, two, three, Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There you go. So we've got that one there, guys. Um, uh, with that one, when you're going back down, uh, when you're going back down here on three, back three, and then make sure you're hitting that one with your pinky, okay? Because the stretch between there, it's a bit of a stretch, but if you just hover your hand over, the natural sort of stretch you will see with your hand there is about four frets, okay? So three, six, okay? So let's move on to the next one we're gonna do, which is a C major pentatonic. And this is a scale which is new texture for us because we've been doing the majority of our scales down in here in these open positions where, but this is a new scale because we're gonna be going right up here to the eighth fret. Okay, so you're going to want your root note on the 8th fret on the C, okay, like so. So it's going to go 8, 10, or D, so it's going to 8, 10, and then 7, 7, uh, 10, and then 7, 10, like so. So let's know, so I'll give you a little example. So this is the, diff the, the major pentatonic as opposed to a minor pentatonic. So again, we'll look for it on the tabs that I've got just here. So if we're looking eight being our note C on the low E string, 10 being the D note, and then we're on seven on the A string or the note F, and then we're on 10, on the, which is the G, and then seven on the D, uh, 10 on the D, and then back down seven on the uh, seven on the D, ten on the A, seven, seven on the A, and then finishing up ten on the low E string and eight on the low E string for our, our root note to finish up the C major pentatonic. So I'm going to get this one up with the click two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, so just that one more time. So this one here, you're going to be moving from your root finger to your index finger, like oh, sorry, your ring finger. So your index finger to your ring finger for that stretch because it's just a tone. So you can do it like that one. And then once you get down to these notes, you want it to go back to your pinky as well because it's more of a stretch. You see, so if, you, if I'm going like that, I'm moving. So I'm moving too much of a stretch. It can be done, but it's not as comfortable, okay? And playing guitar and, and doing these scales is all about the most efficient way and the most comfortable way to do uh, the patterns. Okay, so we'll just finish up for the scales for, for this week uh, with a G major pentatonic. So this is exactly the same shape as our C major pentatonic because it's the same scale. Scales are made up of patterns. And so if you know your root notes, on your low E and A, which most chords are derived from the low E or the low, the low E or the low A string. Um, so it's the same pattern. So here, if I know that's my note C, I can play the pattern of a C major pentatonic scale, and I know where my G is here on the low, on the low, uh, low E string. I know it's the exact same pattern. Okay, so I'll just give you a little quick example. So I'm going to go. Three, um, three, five, two, five, two, five, and then back down to two, five, two, five, three. Okay, so we'll look at that again and then we'll get a bit into it a bit slower. 
So we're just finishing up here. So we're on our note G3. Gonna go up to the fifth fret of the low A string, five on the note A, two uh, on the low A string or the note B, five up to the note D on the low A string, um, two uh, which is E on the D string, five uh, and then and then down to two and then down five again on the low A and then two uh, uh, five sorry and then I can't read it. Five and then three. So we're just gonna go that through that together. So I'll go through it one more time. Sorry, I didn't explain myself very as clear as I could then. So it's the same pattern as here, so exact same pattern, but we're moving it down to our D string. So okay, so I'm gonna get that metronome playing up again. So one, two, three, four, and one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, brilliant guys. So yeah, I hope you um I hope you found those uh, relatively easy. Um we're just we're just been doing them over one octave for now. Just because that's all you're required to do when you're doing uh in for grades one, grades two, you're only required to do these scales over one octave. As you know, if I was to play my A minor pentatonic, uh, say in the root position of five here, I can do it over the full two octaves. So I'd be going. So that's over two octaves, whereas one octave just here, like so. But if you're going further up, you're going over two octaves. So you're not putting in more, different notes she's putting the same notes but octaves of the original scale okay brilliant it's uh, very warm today so i hope we're all staying very hydrated it's uh i think it's 30 degrees out today so yeah it's warm so I, but just before we move on guys if anyone uh found anything uh that we've just done now of those three scales slightly confusing or you want to go over any of it again uh, just let me know in the comments next to it. But if everyone's okay, we'll move on. And we'll get into today's song that I thought we'd do. So this song uh, is called Fast Car, and it's by an artist called Tracy Chapman. Um, and this is a really, really beautiful song. We're going to be using our fingers for this one. So it's going to incorporate lots of what we've been doing over the course of turn two. But hopefully, should be something we can um, we can we can do together. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to play a little example and I'm going to play along to it uh, and then we'll see where we're at. Uh, so this song has a capo on the second fret. So I'm going to play it on a capo so you know what it is, but when we're doing it, I'll do it open. But unless, unless, some of you don't, unless some of you don't have capos. Okay, so let's press play. So it's the size. into that one beautiful song by an artist called Tracy Chapman um, hopefully you will have heard of this song it's a very famous song so yeah I thought we'll just get straight into this one because it's um, I think I think we should be able to tackle it it's uh, this is around uh, round round about the sort of like technical terms of, of like a sort of grade two piece so it should be something we'll be able to do Oh, it's a plane. That's the first time I've seen a plane <laughs> in about three months. So, yeah, so this song, we're going to start on the chord C. Okay, like this. But then what you're going to do is take your pinky up. So I'll get into what, what strings we need to be plucking. So my thumb is going to be, I'm going to take this capo off. So we'll get into, so it's on C. Okay, so we should all do the same now. 
So I'm going to want to rest my thumb on that low A string, like so. And then these two fingers that you've got, you're going to need, they're going to be plucking the G and the B, okay? So we're going to get this onto a C chord. So take our first finger, put it on the B, um, first fret, and then you should know C, hopefully by now, like so. Okay, so what we're going to do, so when we're doing that hammer and pull-off exercise, so I'm going to pluck these in unison, so all together at the same time. Lights. So I'm going. So I hammer on, hat pull off. Hammer on, pull off. So just practice that. Hammer on, pull off. Hammer on, pull off. So I'm playing it's a C major seven to start with and then changing it into a normal C and then pulling it back off. Okay, so. So just practice that a bit. And once you got that down, it's gonna go to a G chord next time, but a broken up G. We're not gonna be playing our full G like so. Okay, we're just gonna need, so the most efficient way to play this is if we go like this. So I'm just using my ring finger to play that low G there, and I'm using my pinky. This is why I said when you're warming up and using all fingers, it's so beneficial because all your fingers are needed to play guitar. So we're going to go hammer on, pull off, and then to the G, like so, yeah? So they're all the same strings, so I'm plucking the G, the B, and the G, the G and the B, and then just the low. So I'm just changing that bass note there, like from the C there to the G. Okay, and that is the only transition you're going to need for this section, the riff part of this um, this song. So again, hammer on, so open, hammer on, pull off, and then to the G. So one, two, three, so it's like one, two, I just had to count this one, one, two, three, four, and then we're going to go, so once you've got that, then we're going to slide our fingers up and we're going to play this E minor. E minor in our A position. Okay? So on the seventh fret, so count seven. And then, but here we're going to break it up even more and we're going to do these broken up chords that we've um, we've looked at before in the past. Okay? So we're just going to be plucking the exact same strings, always the same strings that you're plucking. So I'm plucking, got the A there for my A. And then this finger is going to be on the eighth fret. My ring finger is going to be on the eighth fret of the B. But I'm also playing the G. Okay, so it's like an octave. Like that. So it's like. And then slide up. And then it's a new, really easy transition to the next one. We're just going to go down to a D, a broken up D. So I'm putting my first finger on the fifth fret of the A string. And then my uh, pinky, or you might find it easy to do like that. I usually play with my pinky, because I'm like that. Or you can go. So whatever feels more comfortable for you guys. If you want to do it with your ring finger, I think that's a little bit more of a stretch. So I think that feels slightly more awkward and a little bit less natural. I find it much more comfortable to go pinky. Leave that pinky on, slide that pinky up. So don't take that pinky off the B string, so you know that's your guide. So if you get that up to there, to the A fret, you know that this finger, your middle finger, or your first finger, is already in position to play that, that E note there, okay? So, so when I'm doing this as well, you're gonna be creating a little bit of percussion with your hands, so I'm gonna go, stop notes. Okay, so, it, you, so you're creating a bit of a, a, a rhythm uh, within yourself and your instrument, what you're playing. So you're going, and then sliding up to the seventh fret, fifth fret. Okay, and then for the intro, there's this little other little bit of a riff. So when it goes up to this E minor bit here, it goes. 
So I'm going to put my, this is all the pinky. That's the riff, okay? So it's like. So all I'm doing is extending those notes, okay? So I'm extending this. When I'm on the E, I'm extending it by tone. So I'm going up to, so from the 8th fret there to the 10th fret with my pinky. So I'm going to pluck, 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 and then down to the D. Okay, so using that pinky. So I'm going to do the pluck on this one. So if you're finding that a little bit hard, because there's really fast movements in that one, it's not essential. Slow it down, play it to your own rhythm, slow it down, write down, just go. And then find those notes, leaving that pinky on. And then just like, don't worry about the plucking in the rhythm. Just worry about playing the chords and getting the chord shapes and the timing. So then you can start to speed it up. Once you start getting comfortable, you can start to bring in a little bit of tempo. And you start feeling yourself getting comfortable. Like so, okay, yeah, so once you've got that, guys, and you won't get it straight away because it's um not the easiest thing, but it's, I think you'll agree it's a really pretty piece of music and not even necessarily something that needs to be accompanied with a vocal, just instrumentally using that guitar as a thing of melody. You've got the melody and you've got the music because you've got the bass line. So you're playing a melody with a bass line. So it's like you've got a piece of music in itself, you know, because when you're playing a normal song where it has chords, for example, you know, it, chord is just like C major. It sounds nice, but there's no melody over the top and you pro you provide a melody with, with the thing of singing to it. But this one, because you're playing a bass line, which is the music and you're playing a melody over the top, it sounds, it's got a really interesting sort of like sound. It sounds refreshing to hear, doesn't it? So yeah, just go through that one more time. So we're going hammer on, so open, so open, hammer on, pull off, and then to the G. And then we're going to leave this pinky on. Okay, slide up to the eighth fret, pluck there, and then tap, and then play, tap. Yeah, so right now we've got that, guys. It's got another part of this song which is a chord section. Um, the chords aren't moving too fast. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to find it, this part of the song and show you. Be someone, be someone. So, where are we? Right, so again, the original has a capo on. Um, on on it, so so if you are playing along to the song, it is going to sound different because we're up two semitones with a capo because that's suited to uh, the singer's voice when she was recording it, obviously. So if I just give you a little example of this, and then we'll get into it. So C, E minor, D, C. E minor, D, C, E minor, D minor, C, and then back to the think nice finger picky bit. Yeah, so we'll break this down right slowly. It's a nice and easy one that we should be able to get. So we're going to start on the chord C, which the verse starts on as well. But instead of playing the broken up C where we're plucking, we're going to be using a strumming pattern. So I'm playing C like this, where I've got the G bass note as well. So instead of playing C like that, I'm going to swap that for that finger and put them together. So it sounds like a nice and full C chord because we've got a G bass note on the top as well. Okay, 
So it's like, because I remember when we were driving, driving in your car, and then to a G, speed so fast, I felt like I was a drunk. And then we'll to the E minor, da dee dee, da dee da da, to the D. And this is where it changes, it follows the vocal. Okay, so it goes. So we're following that vocal line, so it's like one and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and back to it. So yeah, back to that one. So it's a one, two, three, four, and C down. So if, when you're doing the strumming technique on this one as well, I tend to just do a down, down, up, up, and down, 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 up, up, down, down, and down, down, up, up, down, and D, two, three, four. So the change is this, are one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So these chords are just moving one chord to every four beats apart from when we get to the C to the E minor section. It's like one and two and three and four. So just practice those changes with those. Okay, and so again with this one, if you're finding it hard playing at that tempo. Slow it right down, slow it right down, and gradually build up your tempo once you get comfortable with the transitions for the chords. Okay, so it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and D, two, three, four, and C, two, three, four, and G, two, three, four, and E minor, two, three. And D two two three and the next bit to C to E minor to the D two three four and C to E minor to the D two three and it ends on a C two three so two bars of a C and then we're back in for the. Like that, like so, yeah. So, um, if everyone's got that, guys, that's brilliant. And go away and have some have some fun with that song because it's um, as I said before, it's a really beautiful song. And if you are wanting to play along to the original, remember there is a capo on the second fret. So if you put a capo on the second fret, everything you have been doing there. So, for example, um, if I'm on the third fret there for my C. I have to move up to the seventh for the um, for the E minor chord. If I'm, it's all relative. So if I put a capo on uh, C there, that's C. Okay. So instead of it being three, it's five. So I've got to make that same movement, but in relation. So I'm not going up to there. I'm not going because it doesn't sound right. I'm making the same movement with the same interval. So here. So you've got to do up, go up two. So what? So you've got to go up two frets as well with this. Okay. So yeah, just a little in case in case anyone was uh, struggling with that and didn't didn't know per se. So I'm gonna get to the next part of my lesson, which we do every week, which is just to go through some tips. And these are some tips I thought I'd leave you with for the summer, as um as this is the last lesson today. So I'm going to start with um, something which is slightly ironic, seems like we have just been learning a cover, which is don't just learn covers. Um, the reason for this being is it's really a good thing to learn covers and expand your repertoire with stuff you are doing and be, and be versatile. And it's really fun to be able to throw out a few covers to your friends or your family or anything like that. But sometimes it can 
hinder you. So don't be afraid to do things yourself and pick up a guitar and try and compose something and write something that you see that you like the look of because it's all kind of good practice and all sort of like comes back and molds into to the same sort of the same sort of like end goal that you're hoping to achieve yeah so don't just learn covers but do learn covers i sound like boris johnson right now um and my second tip is um this is a strange one it's, it's practice to perfection and so when i what i mean by this is if you're learning something, say, for example, we've just been going through Fast Car by Tracy Chapman. If you get that and you're playing it and you can play it a few times and you get it right, don't just feel that that is enough. So you want to be, you want to be sort of practicing these things until you're not getting it wrong. There's no way. So you pick up a guitar. If you pick up a guitar and you can play a chord, you know you're not going to get that chord wrong because you know you can play it. And it's the same thing with um, learning a piece of music or anything like that. So practice to the point with, not where you can get it, but you might make a mistake. Practice to the point where you are not gonna make a mistake and like it's very, very unlikely and you can get some, and that's when you really know you've kind of, um, you've got to where you need to be with um, that learning whatever particular piece you're looking to go through. Uh, so uh, next, moving on, uh, number three is don't neglect your ear. So, so when you're reading tabs, like we've been doing with here, that's all well and good. Or when you're looking up tabs for how to play like a riff or something you want to learn, it's, it's good. And by all means do it because learning tab is a good skill in itself to be able to do. And it's something we will be doing in the future and we will be doing in September. But also your ears are your best friends when, when it comes to being a musician and a guitarist so if you hear something work it out so if, if it's simple chords like like say like that song we've been doing tracy chapman so i can hear that it's a c okay so I'm, and if i can't just like float around the neck till you hear that first note hum it in your head and you'll hear it there and you usually sort of start to work stuff out there and it's really good training exercises to be able to it's called to be able to transcribe so to be able to hear something orally and then to be able to put it through through your head and be able to play it on your instrument it's called to be able to transcribe so it's a really great skill to have um so my next thing is is like as we've been doing today it's why i wanted to do it in a lot of today's lesson incorporate a metronome a little bit into your practice if you can i know they're not the most exciting things but if you uh fortunate enough to have maybe some software where you use uh, some music software where you can make a drum beat or if you look there is actually apps on phones that have but I've got one here it's called it's called Zen Beats Z-E-N Beats um, that one is like you can program drums in so if, you, if, you, if you're getting a bit bored of practicing to a metronome as I said they're not the most um, fun things to listen to you just practice to a beat, program a beat in and practice to a beat, but you'll find that as you're getting older and say if you go into a music studio to record your songs, 99% of the time you will be recording to click tracks, so it's good practice to be able to record to a, just a click track by itself. And last but not least, um, this is what I say to all my students because I see it all too often in people's faces when you're doing something and getting frustrated and it's not going well, don't get disheartened because all your fav all the people that inspired you to want to pick up the guitar, so all your favourite music and all your favourite artists who uh, are guitarists, they all at one point were where you are and everyone goes through that same journey. And it's it's a journey which can last a lifetime for some people if, if it becomes if it becomes a great love of yours to be able to play an instrument. So yeah, don't get disheartened, stick with it, have some fun. Yeah. And unless anyone's got any questions, I think we'll, um, we'll leave it there today because um, the sun is shining. So hopefully go out, people can go out and enjoy the sunshine, and maybe bring your instrument with you. Okay. So yeah, if anyone's got any questions, I'm open our ears, but if not, um, 
I'll see you in September. Give us a like on the on the uh, video. That'd be much appreciated. Um, I hope you all have a fantastic summer, and I'll see you all in September. Okay, thanks very much, guys. All the best.